So let's take a look at what is it that makes oil so valuable. What's the big deal? We'll find anything. We'll throw a solar panel on top of a truck, and my gosh, we'll just run down the road. Well, it's not that easy. Uh, sunlight is uh, very powerful energy, but it's very diffuse. It's very hard to get a, a, lot, a lot of it concentrated in one space from a small space. But oil has got this massive amount of energy in this liquid st substance. Um, you know, I was a truck driver for quite a few years, and you c I can move a, uh, a truck uh, from experience. I know I can move an 80,000-pound tractor trailer, uh, you know, up a shallow grade five or six miles on a single gallon of diesel fuel, one gallon. Suppose you and I had to move 80,000 pounds five or six miles up the shallow grade uh, instead of using a truck, but do it by hand. You know, and let's not be Neanderthal about it. Let's not put it on our back. Let's give ourselves a garden cart, and we'll put 250 pounds in at a time, and we'll wheel it five miles, get in the cart, ride back down, unload it, you know, and then load up another uh, 250 pounds. You're lucky if you can do four trips a day, right, or 1,000 pounds a day. 20 miles a day, that's a lot of walking. That's a lot of work. It would take you 80 days to move 80,000 pounds, and a truck does it in five minutes on one gallon of diesel fuel. That is the amount of embedded energy or power in that liquid substance. Every time you fill your car up with, with gasoline, you know, 10 gallons of gasoline is the equivalent of three years' worth of human labor. And that substance has infiltrated itself into our culture, become so available, so free, and sold so cheaply. You know, what is the true value of oil? If, if you had to move this 80,000 pounds, here's your task. Here's 80,000 pounds. Move it over there, five miles, six miles. Here's your cart, or I'll sell you this gallon of gasoline, this gallon of diesel fuel. How much would you pay? for that diesel fuel to be able to do that job in six or seven minutes versus 80 days, four or five months. That is the true value of oil. That is what it is truly worth because of the massive amount of work. And coal and natural gas are these massive concentrations of carbon fuel. And each one of them has their own gift of this massive amount of energy. And we have been, taken these substances and brought them into our culture, and they are changing. They have changed the way we live on this planet. They have given us a very false sense of reality. And how do we use these incredibly valuable resources? I'm on slide 32. Well, you know, we do work, of course, with it, um, but we do use it for recreation. We use it to heat our homes. Uh, we use it, um, you know, for automobiles, our, one thing or the other. But I love this picture of the night sky you know, from a satellite uh, of Earth. You know, if we flew over the planet 150 years ago or 250 years ago, you know, other than maybe a, a raging uh, forest fire somewhere, uh, you wouldn't see any lights, you know, down there on the planet. It would uh, be basically dark. But one of the things we do today is with electricity, usually from burning coal or nuclear, we light up the night sky. And you have to, you know, I, I sit here and I look at that and I think we're taking coal, you know, coal out of the ground, uranium, turning it into energy, turning it into light, and lighting the night sky. 200 years from now, when these substances, 50 years from now, my gosh, 20 years from now, when these substances of oil and coal become incredibly valuable, when the price of gasoline is 20 bucks a gallon, we're going to ask ourselves this question. What was so important about lighting up the night sky? Why would we trade this incredibly valuable substance just to light up the night? I mean, was there some, you know, you know, 200 years from now, you look back and we'll look back and say, what were humans thinking at that time? Was there some, you know, raging dinosaur that, you know, would wander the planet at night and would not touch you if it was, you know, if there were lights on? <laughs> I mean, we have. Are we safer now because there's lights? Were we not safe 200 years ago? Will we not be safe in the future if there's if we're not lighting up the night sky? It's just one of those extravagances. It's just an example of an extravagance that we have allowed ourselves because we think energy is bountiful, endless, and cheap. And um, slide 33. There are many people that are asking the question: Is you know what is the human experience about? You know, when when an animal um, dies in the woods or in the prairie, and assuming it's not consumed by a larger animal, if you draw a three-foot circle 
around that carcass and just watch that spot for the next several days, the biological activity in that one spot just explodes as all kinds of bacteria and bugs and environments come in to consume that carcass. But once the carcass is consumed, the area or that spot returns to a state of homeostasis or balance. And there are many people that are looking at us as a human species and saying, is this what's happening to us? We're discovering this substance, this fuel, this food, and we've just gone nuts. Our world population and the way we live has just exploded. And where will we be 200 years from now? I certainly don't know the answers to that. 